Welcome to a short presentation of Olive Tree Lab Terrain. My name is Lina Ikonomu from Mediterranean Acoustics Research and Development, PEMART for short. I'm going to demonstrate the following scenario. We are going to look at a house close to a stadium which hosts concerts, a motorway between the stadium and the house and an AC unit close to the house. The objective is to determine the background noise level as our noise reference, being from traffic noise, as well as investigate whether the concerts and the AC unit levels exceed the background noise level. In this presentation we are going to look at how to model our scenario using Terrain CAD tools. Terrain has a few CAD tools available, but we don't want you to change from using your typical CAD software, be it AutoCAD, SketchUp or any other. We are going to assume that you have already modeled your scenario using a third-party CAD software, since Terrain can import DXF and DWG drawings exported from others. For this particular presentation, since we don't know the exact distances between the house, stadium and motorway, we are going to use Google Earth to establish our distances, and then use Terrain's CAD tools to model our project. At the end of the day, you as the user can decide which method is more suitable and easier for you. So let's begin with modeling our project. When you launch Terrain, you will see a 100 by 100 meter ground by default. We will delete this ground and redraw it later. Let's import our Google Earth location as an image and scale it according to the original image we have saved it from Google Earth. This way we maintain the same aspect. We are now going to draw our ground over the image and set the color to transparent in order for the image to remain visible. We will specify a flow resistivity of 550,000 units and set our ISO parameter to mixed ground. Now let's import our DXF model. In this particular example, we have created a simple shape for the stadium to expedite calculations. We will also only import polylines in order to demonstrate the CAD tools. Of course, you may import polyfaces directly. We are first going to draw our grass area in the stadium and assign a flow resistivity of 200,000 units. We are going to demonstrate two ways of drawing walls. The first method is by using create walls and the second method is by using the extrude function. Select the lines representing the walls on the ground surface and extrude them to the desired height. We are now going to draw in our seating area using the create surface from point to point and assign a flow resistivity of 200,000 units. In order to see the equivalent absorption coefficient values, we have a conversion tool which when pressed lists the absorption coefficient values for you. Next we are going to draw in our house using the create rectangle and extrude functions. We are now going to draw the road. Even though we have already drawn a ground at the start of the presentation, in this particular case it would be best to define a separate flow resistivity value for the road, as it's harder. Using the Draw Ground tool, draw our road and assign a flow resistivity value of 20 million. Next, we'll draw in our line source, being the road traffic. You can define the line source either by angle or distance. In this case, we will specify a distance of 50 meters and a height of 0.05 meters according to the Knossos database. We can select multiple sources from our object tree and change their properties in one go. Let's first change the 3D representation to cars, but please note that we would still have to assign the noise source spectrum. In this case, we will add our already measured data into the database using the Add Custom Noise Source.
Next, we'll insert our receiver, approximately a meter away from the house and a height of 4 meters, and establish our receiver criteria being the background noise level. Before we establish our background noise level, let's first assign our calculations options to 500 meters and 200 strongest paths to calculate. Let's have a look at our paths. As you can see, we have reflections from the walls of the stadium and the house. Now let's run the precise calculations in order to determine the background noise level. Results are displayed in our precise graph panel and the output window. In the output window, let's select the LP after and export the data to clipboard. We are now going to import this data as our receiver criteria. In the receiver panel, we're going to edit our criteria database and import from clipboard. We then need to select the newly added criteria from the custom criteria drop down menu. In the precise graph, we can now see that the receiver criteria is represented by the grey area, which is equal to the level at the receiver, represented here by the blue line. Next, let's insert an array of four speakers in the stadium. We're going to insert first the first speaker, change the 3D representation to PA system, and we'll import the power spectrum into our database. We're then going to use the clone function to clone them into an array of four speakers and then we will clone the array to the other side of the stadium. Another note, loudspeakers are considered as monopole or point sources. Now let's skip to a completed configuration. As you can see, Terrain can have multiple configurations, allowing the user to switch between them with ease without having to open up multiple projects. We're now going to run the calculations to determine the effect of the concerts on the house. In our calculations options, we need to make sure that our sources are coherent and we need to disable the cars from our calculations. In the object tree, select the multiple cars and make sure the Use in Calculation option is disabled in the Source panel. Now let's run the precise calculations. And our precise graph shows that the excess levels we need to deal with. Just for demonstration purposes, let's draw a barrier on top of the stadium and run the calculations again. As you can see now, the meter is in green and the excess levels have dropped. But since we don't really need the barrier in this case, let's just delete it. Now let's insert our AC unit and change the 3D representation to AC compressor. Again, we're going to import the power spectrum into the database and select it as our noise source spectrum. In order to run calculations to see the effect of the AC unit, let's first set our calculations options to two diffractions, one reflection, and disable the speakers from our calculations using the same method as we did previously with the cars. Now run the precise calculations again. Let's insert a barrier approximately 4 meters by 1 meter height. and run the calculations once more. As you can see, the direct path here is represented in white. If we double click on the path, we'll enable the Path Explorer to see the details. Paths with zero value reflections and diffractions are direct paths. 
Let's change our barrier to a gamma barrier and move it closer to the source, allowing approximately half a meter space for access for maintenance. Now make the barrier 1.6 meter high, 4 meters wide, gamma length of 1 meter, and 135 degrees angle. Run the precise calculations again. Now we can see that our excess level meter is green. Let's also run the ISO calculations as well to compare. You can see the results in the graph panel and in the output window where you can compare the ISO results with PEMAD's results. Now let's have a look at the impulse response calculations. One can correlate the impulse response with a paths panel and visualize in both forms the instances when reflections and diffractions take place. For instance, we can see here that it takes 24.5 milliseconds for the first path to reach the receiver. This is also displayed in the Paths Explorer table. Users can also oralize the scenario before and after the insertion of a barrier. You can either import your own WAV files into Terrain or select one from the existing database. Once you've selected your WAV file, select the impulse response to Convolve from the drop-down menu and click Play. Finally, let's take a look at mapping, which is essentially the distribution of sound over an area of microphones or receivers. We're going to map on two areas, on the facade of the house and horizontally around the barrier at about 2.3 meter height. The results can be seen either in 2D or 3D depending on your preference. The first thing you see is the broadband results of the insertion loss, but you may choose to go through various frequencies, and here we show the insertion loss at 1000 Hz. By clicking on the mapping you can see levels and coordinates of each microphone or receiver. You can also see the LP before the insertion of a barrier and after the insertion of a barrier. At this point it's also good to compare the LP after using PEMAD's calculations and ISO calculations.
You can also export all the results that you have into Excel or any other third-party software. This completes this presentation. Thank you for watching.